There's just about one word to describe the Rocket Suara. Simple. In a day and age where most mechanical gaming keyboards just aren't, it could be a real breath of fresh air. But, like everything, this will really come down to personal preference. From the outset, I can say I like some things about the simple design of this keyboard for sure. However, there's other things that absolutely rule it out as my daily driver. Let's take a tour around the keyboard first. The first thing you have to notice is how absolutely no space is wasted here on the Suara. The only way it could have been smaller would be to either cut off the 10 key numpad or squish the keys into an uncomfortable level. Maintaining the full standard layout, Rocket have squeezed in all of your standard keys and then some. Taking the Suara from mechanical keyboard to mechanical gaming keyboard classification in my eyes are the inclusions of the dedicated game mode button and the macro controls, built in as a secondary function on the insert, home, end, del, page up and page down keys. Another awesome inclusion is the dedicated volume control keys, also found at the top right of the keyboard. These simple and extremely useful additions are what escalate this keyboard from minimal to simple in my eyes, and I believe it's a really good compromise. The keyboard is also fully backlit, another telltale sign of a gaming keyboard. This also saved Rocker from adding any dedicated LED indicators for Caps Lock and his friends, which are instead indicated on the keys themselves. The face-up body of the keyboard is made from a durable and quite smudge-resistant aluminium, not that much of it faces up. You can only really see the section with the Rocket logo above the arrow keys during use, but it looks good and also gives a nice, slightly reflective glow from the above switch blue LEDs behind the keycaps. The sides of the body are a glossy, smudge-attracting surface, however it's black all round and it's a small, unnoticeable section really. At the back of the keyboard you'll find the Suara logo as long as a tagline reading, Frameless Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. The underside is simple, featuring two flip down legs with rubberized feet and four rubber pads at the front to keep the keyboard in place. The design is capped off with a nice braided cable, and that's about all there is to say about it. This Rocket keyboard employs not Cherry MX or Kyle switches, but instead TTC Brown mechanical switches, which I haven't encountered before. I know the TTC red switches were featured on the budget MEK keyboard, and from all reports, they were very similar to the Cherry MX reds. These TTC Brown switches seem to follow suit. They're very similar in feel and sound to the Cherry MX Browns. If anything, they feel slightly lighter and make a high pitched sound. The switches are rated for 50 million strokes, but as they're relatively new on the market, it's tough to say how they'll stand up. But based on their feel and appearance, I wouldn't expect them to roll over and die anytime soon. But again, that's an educated guess at this point. I don't think Rocket would include a switch that wasn't at the very least reliable. For actual typing, this keyboard feels great, and this is how it sounds. I personally much prefer to have a wrist rest, so that was a negative for me, but the keys, layout and backlighting all made for a great user experience. The dedicated game mode key is handy and can be quickly toggled on and off without looking even, and the function key and media controls are great. I myself wouldn't choose to do extensive typing on this keyboard because I find having a wrist rest much more ergonomic. However, for those that don't need one, this keyboard is entirely suitable. Rocket Swarm software controls the Suara, though thankfully it's not required for almost all of its functions. Before installing it, I was able to toggle between 9 different backlight brightness levels, plus off and a breathing effect. After installing and updating the Swarm software, I was then able to tinker with the character repeat rate, adjust key assignment, and strangely, switch on sound feedback that makes a sound from your speakers every time you make a keystroke. There's 4 sounds to choose from, including a click, a typewriter sound, a beam sound, and sci-fi sounds. They're all bad and anyone that uses it is a nutter, but this inclusion obviously doesn't take away from the keyboard. It's more like a funny prank you can pull. Overall, the Suara is good at what it's meant to be. It's a simple, mature, to the point product that gives users a full layout without taking up any extra room on the desk. I think it hit a good sweet spot between minimalism and features including handy things like dedicated volume control and the game mode key. The function key also opens up a few more handy controls, and this is something we see on almost all keyboards these days. I was a little surprised I had to install multiple updates to the Swarm software in order to eventually interact with the keyboard through it, however overall I'd say the software is pretty unnecessary anyway. You'll only open it up to use it if you want to change key assignment or mess around with one of the strangest features I've seen included in the keyboard accompanying your software, the sound feedback feature, which was surely just included as a laugh. In a simply designed mechanical keyboard like this, pricing is going to be a huge factor. The Suara is so new at this stage that it's not listed on Newegg or Amazon yet, however I did find it available for pre-order at EB Games in Australia for $160. This is a little pricey in my eyes, but all mechanical keyboards in Australia are really. 
I believe the Swarry is due to hit US retailers this month and it should be available for $100, US which is a little more than I'd like to pay for this feature set. However, for those that are trying to find the small desk footprint and simplicity, then it will be well worth it. Comparing this to say the Gigabyte Force K83 for example, if I got to choose, I would choose the Swarry for sure. It's only an extra $20. US in Australia though, the Force K83 can be had for 95 bucks, quite a bit cheaper than the Swara. Let's hope the pricing comes down a little down under. It should. EB Games aren't known for being super price competitive. So what do you think of the Rocket Swara? Let me know in the comments and follow me on Facebook. I'm your host Matt as always and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.